support for Tom's Brain comes from Uber. Get your free £10 credit by using the code UberTomPod. T-O-M-P-O-D. Join now and get your first £10 ride for free. start recording the podcast and my dog wanted to throw up so real life people it's happening he's not sick it's just his food disagrees with him sometimes i felt a bit guilty not getting this out when i said i would i mean i didn't say that i'd be back next week I always kind of feel guilty not sticking to a weekly schedule, especially when it's something I enjoy doing. And I do enjoy doing this because, like I said, it's my therapy. And But on reflection, this will be the fourth podcast that I've put out in January. And, and so that's basically one a week. So I don't know what you're complaining about. <laughs> If you hear anything, it's my dog. He's all deaf now. He's got that, obviously. So he's being rambunctious. No, this episode of the podcast is very, very special and dear to my heart because I'm not alone. I'm going to be handing you over to a conversation that I recorded with my stepsister, who's not my stepsister, Katie Liz Heath. And she's definitely somebody who I I want to have back on as soon as possible because we've got so much to talk about. We didn't even touch upon the things in our life that we've shared together. And she's one of the closest people in my life, and I love her. So I hope you enjoy listening to the two of us. But before we get to that, I need to do a bit of padding because um, that part of the podcast is only... How long? 30 minutes. So what with this being about my condition and everything, I thought you might like a little update on my treatment. I saw my new doctor because my old doctor has gone on a seconda, as we discussed. And my new doctor is really nice and I saw him on my own, and I don't usually see my doctor on my own. Yeah. Sorry, my dog's just running <laughs> amok. Yes, you, you're running amok. Quarter to three, and the moon is out. The sun and moon are out at the same time, not the other way. Where was I? So my new doctor is lovely, and I saw him by myself, and that's not something that I usually do, because my mum is very... She wants to be... Um, in the know, basically. Not that I would not tell her everything, but she's just done it all my life, and so, you know, it's hard to let go, but, you know, I keep saying to her, I can do this. Please let me. I mentioned in this conversation with Katie that we we got into a, a fight because of this very reason that I keep saying, you know, let me live my own life and she's uh it's it's i feel so guilty when i want to do things on my own and we we aren't the same person the way that she lives her life is very scheduled and the way that i live my life is very spontaneous i don't 
over plan for things. Very rarely, anyway. I just let them happen. Kind of like this podcast. I just do it when I feel like it. Okay, the dog is barking and the phone is ringing at the exact same time. <laughs> what is the universe trying to tell me? Okay, thanks. Everything stopped now. So, the argument, it hasn't really been resolved. And I've spoken with Carrie about it and she says, you know, when we're both feeling good, sit my mum down and, and, and have a talk, but it's nothing that I haven't already said. And it's just going to have to be learned the hard way, unfortunately. Anyway. Just, just clarifying that up, because I, I never actually talked about what the argument was about. So back to my doctor's appointment and he's a very nice doctor and he gave the go ahead for me to up the dosage of my Eprex Ipoatin injection steroid thing that is I'm still not entirely sure what it does. Um, he gave the go ahead for that to be upped to the maximum dosage of um, 10,000 units, that's it, um, which is one mil. And everything seems to be going fine, but I still haven't gone three weeks without a transfusion. Um, I have my blood results from the test that I had before my last transfusion, which was a week ago. So this was after the first dose of the new dosage. <laughs> That's not a word. And my platelets were 80. My white cell count, 5.13. And my hemoglobin was 8.8. .8. And so that's definitely in need of a, a transfusion. So I had one last week. And I'm going in for another full blood count tomorrow. And, you know, hopefully that'll be less than, I'll be having that blood count less than 24 hours after my dosage tonight and having another dose of the Eprex. So I'm really curious to see what my blood count says now that I'm on a higher dosage. We're approaching week 10 of this 12-week trial and I don't know if technically the 12-week trial starts again now that we're on a new dosage, I don't know actually, but I've got an appointment at the end of February. I've got two appointments actually, I've got one with my new doctor and one with my um, endocrinologist. He deals with all my uh, vitamin and hormone dealios which I'm on what am I on? wait what am I on? I'm on some, some sort of levothyroxine yeah for a underactive thyroid So we'll get all that checked. Um, but you know, the realization that maybe this drug won't actually work, and I still have to have the transfusions every two weeks, it won't 
really. I mean, I'm disappointed if it does that happens. But it won't be like a death sentence because I've lived my whole life this way. And you know, things like new treatment take a long time to get on board with and, and 12 weeks is nothing, you know. I can try new tr treatment for 12 weeks and if it doesn't take, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So when I next see you, it will be February and I'm going to discuss more about my plans to travel. Can I tell you a little secret? I've been looking up ferry boats to Copenhagen and Amsterdam and like I'm tempted to just like this and this is another thing with like my mum letting go like if if I were to want to go, which I do, I mean, I, I would love, of course, who wouldn't love to go? But if I did, I'd, I'd have to do it in secret because there's absolutely no way that my mum would let me travel without having her say and doing things her way. So, you know, you sail the night, you arrive in the morning, you spend the day there, and then you sail back at, at night. So you're not even staying overnight in a different country. So, you know, I don't see what the problem is. And we know, we, have, we both know, I'm not going to do it. I haven't even looked at Glasgow yet, so I'm not going to jump on a boat. But it's nice to dream, and it's nice to know that the possibility is there. Well, yeah. I could probably discuss this with Kay. So, we may revisit this topic in the future. Me and Kay have shared a lot of holidays. If I don't go to Disneyland with my nephews, I'd, I'd love to go with Kay. Um, I really hope that you enjoy this conversation it's not it's not an interview we do talk a bit about katie's band but we don't go in depth that will come because things are moving in a really great direction for her and as you can hear from the theme tune she's a very talented musician so please without further ado Enjoy the podcast. Well, it's been quite a slog to get back into these podcasts because I've been feeling like my opinion doesn't matter. So I needed a little extra help for this one, so I've, I've wrote my uh, stepsister, who's not my stepsister, Katie, keep into the uh, recording process. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good. You look so tired. I am. I'm so tired. <laughs> but I'm, I'm ready for this. Good. Well, the, the first thing we can talk about is the fact that the theme tune that I use for the podcast was actually made by you. Oh, is it? Yes, it's Echo from the Night. Oh, I didn't know you used that. Yeah. Oh, do you, you should, do you owe me some, some money then? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Copyright and all that. I'm sorry, I'll let you off. Yeah. Um, this time. I got permission when we used it for the clown. <laughs> So you thought you could use it for everything. No, that's quite it's all just, right. That's it's quite all right. A, such a great song. Like, and like, if you get to re-record it, I'll be very excited. 
Oh, that's interesting you say that, because yeah. I was thinking about it this week and whether I was going to revisit it or not, but um, we'll have to let you know how that pans out. Uh, I've never, I've only, I only play the instrumental, mm. so I might, if, with your permission, uh, as a little treat at the end of the podcast, I'll, I'll play the whole song. Cool. Um, so one thing I, I was thinking about this week is how I would love to write something with you. Okay. Because I, I gave you like lots of little lyric ideas, and I've spoke on the podcast before about some songs that I wrote when I was like a teenager. I can't believe how old I am now. <laughs> <laughs> how old are you again? Twenty-eight. Good grief. When, when, when did we first meet? Um, I was four. Four. And I'm now 22. So that's 22 years now. <laughs> <laughs> 16 years ago. 16. 18. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, we're both terrible. <laughs> I had this dream last night. Do you ever get like um, panic dreams about going, like being late for an appointment? Yes, yeah. Well, mine are always at school. Like I'm going back to school and I'm not prepared. So you copy Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that looks fancy. Yeah. I wonder what that means if you Googled it. Um, I just think it means like anxiety about like not being like, I think it's a lot to do with like, I know that I'm, sh- I'm shirking my responsibilities. Um, I got into a huge argument with my mum, but it was just, it, it was just like a time of the, cause I got in at half past 12. Good Lord. I know, like, and how, how I should really say this just so what time, Never mind. No, go on, go on. Oh, well, like, what time did you get home last night? It was about half two. Yeah, exactly. And, like, my mum went absolutely bananas. <laughs> I guess it's just because she's not used to it because I've started using Uber. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I use Uber. Um, we, as a podcast, we endorse yeah, Uber. I literally, I start every episode with a... a a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, invite them on to the show. <laughs> well, I've got a really chatty driver. Because uh, they always want the five stars. Yeah. They're so cute. Um, Someone they're... gave me a Ferrero Rocher the other day because he wanted five stars. <laughs> and he got five stars. He bribed me to the Oh, well, now stars. that I know that, I'm going to rate everybody four stars until I get that Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> I should say we, we are... We're filming on recording on location, and uh, maybe I can. Should I give a little shout out <laughs> yeah, to uh, Lynn's Espresso? Have you ever been there? Before? No, this is my first time, and I like it. It's very edgy. It's very <laughs> urban outfit. Yes, kind of. this is very urban outfit. What I actually thought is, I think, I think like the guys would be up for like playing your EP when it was released because, you know, the very, like, Leeds support oh, no. homegrown talent. How do you know? Have you asked? No, I haven't asked. I'm just assuming. All right. Well, Leo, let's just assume. <laughs> Could bring my EP in. Tell them to whack it on. Should be out by May. Oh, May. Gosh. That's my own, not Kel's. All oh, right. Kel's should be out by like February. Good, because oh, I was getting excited for that. Maybe March. I don't know. We'll see. See how it pans out. So yeah, back to my lyric idea. Yes, sorry. It's all good. Um, I always used to write from actually like I've always identified well with. Um, female characters. Alright. 
the right from <laughs> like this was almost like even before I, I knew I was gay that I used to write like loving him and stuff <laughs> like <laughs> You must have known you were gay all along, really. No? No. I think it was just like natural um, hormones was what it was. Because I didn't have it. <laughs> like, I think they wanted to put me on artificial hormones when I was 14. But I was strongly against it. Why did they want to do that? Because they thought I wouldn't get them. I testosterone and stuff. Um, but I, like, I was afraid of, like, because it was a steroid. And I was afraid of, like, bulking up and changing. Mm. And getting moody and violent. <laughs> <laughs> Just the typical what you'd expect from steroids. <laughs> So I persevered and things kicked in when I was like 16 and then by the time I was 18 I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gay but I won't tell anyone and then... Just keep it on the way down <laughs> for a little bit. How old were you when you came out? Um, it was 2009, so... Um, Oh, this is what I was. This is what my dream was about. Five years ago, then. Um. Yeah, five six years ago. Five years ago. Six years ago in August. So you were twenty-two. Thank you. Because my my dream last night, I wasn't prepared to go back to school, and it was maths, and I was just like. Screw maths, I'm not doing maths. I don't I don't need to use maths in everyday life. Yeah, and we've noticed how that's <laughs> had an impact. <laughs> oh, I, I can't even hold my head up. Oh, baby. It's not easy. Are you pro bear or against bear? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I'm against it, but ironically, I'm pro it. Yeah. What I was thinking is, we started out with bow. I don't know what bow is. Like my bow. We need to talk about something else after you finish then. Have you? Uh, okay, go. So bow. Yeah. And then we had boo. Like my boo. Yeah. If I win, I win my boo. Yeah. I'll win my boo. And then uh, now we've got beer. I want to skip straight to bye. I don't want to go, hey, bye bye. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. You never know, though. What about boob? <laughs> A boob. Um, so, okay. have you watched American Horror Story? Yeah. Because I just got into it this week. How many years later, am I? Um, four. Uh, that's not a little sick. But yeah, I've done series one. Has something been trolled about the ending of series uh, one? No, it kind of tailpiped. Um, I mean, I liked, spoiler, spoiler alert, um, I liked when it was revealed that the teenage daughter had died. Yeah. That was a good twist. But I just, like, she had the baby and she died. And yeah. Her husband died. And then it just kind of, like, all fell apart a bit. Yeah. And then they like tried to spook the other couple out of the house, and I was like, it's a bit stupid now. Have you moved on to the second one? No. That is by, uh, by far the best, like even of ever, the three and four. Because, oh, really? Do, do you like Jessica Lang? Like, um, <laughs> don't you, don't you realize there's not going to be a swimming pool, you stupid little slut? <laughs> yeah, I love her. <laughs> Yeah, well, she really is great. She's great, isn't she? She's amazing. I feel like she's the um, <laughs> gay icon or something. 
Possibly, like, she was in Tootsie, um, and lots of old 80s films, and then she hadn't been anything for ages, and this was like her first, this is like a comeback, this is like her Liam Neeson comeback. I like the maid. Um, yes, that's She's Francis so Conroy. hot. She's from um, Six Feet Under. The young one. The young maid or the oh, old Oh no, maid? the young maid. Um, that yeah, one. well the old maid's not hot. <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe in some life. <laughs> She's from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. The old maid, but what's the young maid from? Um, she was in an Amanda Bynes film. Oh. She's the man. Oh, I've been looking at Amanda Bynes on Twitter. Oh. It's all going wrong again, isn't it? Well, she's not getting sent to jail, so that's a good thing. Oh, but I can't get into it because it's just too upsetting. It's like... Oh, no, go on, get into it. <laughs> well, I've never, I've never broached the subject of how big of an Amanda Bynes fan I was. Oh, such a big fan. I had the number one British website dedicated to Amanda Bynes. Did you really? Had 10,000 visitors in one day. That's so good. Um, I used to go on the Amanda, Amanda Please website. Oh yeah, that was the best. It's still up. How is it still up? Because it's I can't like what a wreck she's turned into. Like when I watch Hairspray, so <laughs> when I watch Hairspray, I'm like, what's happened to her? I can only like just think it's like um, schizophrenia, like. Bipolar, she's been diagnosed with something. Well, supposedly. But the, the, and the, thing, the sad thing is, like, mental health is so, like, like taboo to talk about. And I don't think, like, her dad, he still kind of sees her as being resp- held responsible rather than it being an illness. Mm. Um. Well, I thought some prayers are with Amanda Bynes at this, <laughs> at this troubling yeah. time. I got her autograph hanging above my bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Would um, you like to talk about Kel? Yeah. Oh, well, let's... Do you think that should be a separate podcast? It should be. We'll, we'll revisit it. But I'll get back on to the uh, topic of my lyrics. <laughs> so I was writing from the point of view of a um, yeah a woman, so they'll really fit you. Right. There's this one called Cruel Intent. I've played a few like demos that I've tried to sit. Um, so there's one called Cru- Cru- Cruel Intentions, which is about the film, um, but the film is based on. Dangerous liaisons. So you've got like literary credentials if you if you ever want to like sound. Because I'm just assuming you kind of still want to go down that Lana Del Rey route of of being kind of like melancholy. (laughs) That is what I'm all about. She's working with the same guy from. Born to die again. Oh really? Oh that's good. Yeah. Oh, but I did like Ultraviolet. It had its moments. But I've, I've never, I don't listen to it as much as. Her. No, I don't. No. Paradise. I do like the, I really like the production of Ultraviolence, but just the songs weren't quite as catchy as Kate. Yeah. So there's one called Cru- Cruel Intentions. Um, I was thinking, I need to, I've been organising them in chronological order, and I don't know if I told you that. I think I did. Yeah. Um, so it's more like a diary now. Yeah. And there's, there's one about being covered by the sheets of makeup, which I thought I could might be able to fit to you. I'm gonna... Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um... I've got this really 
Q um, notebook, which is all um, got like musical sketches on it that I bought for. I needed to round out my uh, order to get free shipping. So let's look at this. And I thought I'd be able to give it away as a Christmas present. But I've been hanging out on my own, so I haven't seen anyone. So, I thought, oh, you give it up to me. I so, so I'm going to write some little <laughs> lyric ideas down and then hand it to you. So that, I really want the notebook for some well, this could be well, this one in Urban Outfitters and it was gorgeous, but it was like 25. This is honestly, it's got a sketch of the Eiffel Tower on it, on the front. And um, all on the inside, it's got like Japanese characters and mu musical notes. So I want to know, like, because I came out to you practically... I came out to you after I came out to my mum. Yeah. So before I came out to my dad. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Is that like a reaction? <laughs> <laughs> How did he react? He was really cool. Um, we'd been to the cinema. It was two weeks after I came out to my mum. Oh, but it was so uh, short. No. I I told him when he dropped me off. I said I've told mum, so I want I I wanted to tell you. Face to face, you know, I'm gay, um, and he said, and it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. So he didn't seem shocked in the flight. No. Do you think he knew all along? Well, what did you? <laughs> that's what I was. Kidding. No, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't like shocked. But I never really, and I just never thought about it, you know what I mean? It wasn't like I was like, oh my god, I would never have guessed. It was just, all oh, right, okay. You know what I mean? I think that's... Would you be shocked if I came out as good? No, because you've always talked about your love of nipple It's true. <laughs> I'm quite a deep bird. I'm kind of rooting for you to be a lesbian. Oh, so I think we need to address the issue that we're both dying to address, which is... Pretty little life. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, why have you started me on this <laughs> path of destruction? I discovered it in 2012. I watched like 12 episodes in one day. Um, this is when it was on Virgin Media, um, and I caught up in time for this season three premiere. So then, from then on, I watched it illegally. Um, <laughs> but now that it's on Netflix. Yeah. So do you want to tell me who it is and then we can just get past this whole story of uh... No, because I want you to be surprised. Right, I'm going to guess who I think gay is. It's either one of the girls. Is it one of the girls? Not that we know of. But it's a big running theory that it is. Yeah. It's never been hinted at, well, directly, but... Is it, do we not even know yet? Or do you know who it is? No. no. See, there's a big air. Oh, how long is it going to go on for? Would be Another scared? two years. Good. I bet it's someone really good at this, but I bet Alison's not even dead. <laughs> is Alison not even dead? <laughs> Alison's not dead. Oh my god, spoiler. <laughs> Are you spoiling for me now? Oh my god, Sam! Oh, which series am I going to find this out right, in? Did you see the episode after the car after Hannah got hit by the car? How's that way? Yeah, I'm well past that. So you remember Alison visited her in the hospital? Hannah, oh, did she put it on the she wrote on a leg. No, Alison visited Hannah. She was dressed in that uniform. Oh yeah, like as a vision. As a vision. That was actually that actually happened. No. So this keeps happening for the next yeah. like three seasons. Each of them have like hallucinations, <laughs> but and then we find out they actually she actually came back. So is she dead now. I don't. I won't say any anymore. Um, but 
the body that they thought is her isn't her, and we're just now finding out who it is. Who can, how can they get the wrong body? Yeah. Uh, it's so unrealistic in every single way. It's, it's very hyper. I just can't still watch it. Uh, See, I re I rewatched all the episodes that you're watching now. Yeah, it's, it's so much better than it is now. I don't know what it is, but what has it got? Well, rubbish. It's, it's not got rubbish. It's just dragging. Like, like I definitely want to know who A is. I bet it's that blind girl. Hmm. But then would that be true either? I bet it is something weird. She's Australian, you know. She was in um, that Nickelodeon show, H2O. Oh, no. <laughs> it's short but sweet. Would you like to wrap this up and maybe accompany me to uh, take some things back from her? <laughs> Like the rock and roll life I lead. What my mum wanted to do. Um, <laughs> she didn't know where the returns to part was. Uh, nah, I'm only joking. I can go on my own, but um, I am gonna have to go. I'm afraid. It's been wonderful. I feel like we've come across well. Don't know about what people think about hearing us, but leave your uh, comments and feedback at um, Tom's Brain at Yahoo.com. <laughs> Tom's Brain Two at uh, Yahoo.com. How do you care? Oh. <laughs> Tom's we're in two at yahoo.co.uk. Uh, if you'd like to give me a follow, I am on Twitter and Instagram at Katie Liz Heap. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. Get it, girl. Do you have a sign out, Tom? Do you have a good sign out line? No, um, I just like. You need a sign out. Do all that promotion. So like. Um, Give my email address, then I give my Twitter, um, and then subscribe, rate, and review. I'm on Stitcher now, and Stitcher's a really good platform for podcasts. It's got like a really beautiful interface, and you can get it on the Android. So, come on, do a do a sign out line. Well, you should do it because we're gonna play your song now. <laughs> okay, um, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm Katie Heap, and this has been the podcast. <laughs>
want to give a big, big thank you to Katie for being on my podcast. I hope you enjoyed that. She's going to be back again. I just need to get her away from work because she has crazy working hours and recording hours and college. So she's very highly in demand. Um, a quick note before the end. Uh, I want to plug a fellow podcast that I think you should all be listening to. Since me and Katie discussed Pretty Little Liars, I thought if any of you were interested, I listened to a Pretty Little Liars podcast called, funnily enough, Pretty Little Podcasters. Uh, Sorry, we're supposed to say it like this. Pretty Little Podcasters. And that's available on iTunes. So look it up. It's hosted by Marissa and Ben, and it's Melissa. There's two M's, but one B. And they talk all things A, and they have fabulous guest stars. And I discovered it through the April Richardson podcast, Go Beto. Um, That is a podcast talking about Saved by the Bell, but we won't mention that because we didn't talk anything about Saved by the Bell. But, um, yeah, you can contact me on Twitter. I am LGB Tom. You can like the Facebook page, Tom's Brain Pod. And I'm now on Stitcher. I better get this right. Stitcher.com forward slash podcast forward slash Tom's Brain. It's much easier than the iTunes link. The iTunes link is ridiculous. I won't even give that out. But if you do subscribe on iTunes, just give me a rate. Give me a a review. Just say um, anything. Say, ooh, that dog was noisy in the background. (laughs) And I will have, hopefully lots of nice things to talk about.